David, what can science say, if anything, about God, the existence of God, and realms beyond the physical? <clears throat> well, <laughs> I guess I, I could ask you what to define God. Now, you can always define God in a way uh, where the answer to that question is physics, is simply exploring <laughs> features of God, or you could define God as something that violates, you know, that has the ability to violate the law of physics, and in which case we'd say that physics is proving that God doesn't exist, or you could define God in Spinoza's as being nature itself. And so it really depends on what you mean by God. Um, I uh, think that physics uh, has enough work to do to simply in dealing with that that can be observed or measured or calculated. And so far, um, God, I suppose, according to definition number one, never appears in the equation. <laughs> and according to definition number two, is the equation. <laughs> Uh, do you see, uh, some people call for a uh, consilience uh, between science and religion. They talk about uh, spheres of influence or large areas that don't intersect but should have some uh, peaceful coexistence of some kind. Do you subscribe to those uh, views? Well, it's, it's really interesting. I had a, uh, I met about a year ago with the Dalai Lama. I had, uh, we were together at a, at a conference and um, I spent some time with him and I asked him about, you know, as a um, the leader of uh, Tibetan Buddhism, what he thought was the relationship between science and religion, especially I asked him whether there were findings of science that would threaten his beliefs. Um, and he gave a very interesting answer. He said, no, he, um, he uh, in, in fact, in his own life, went through an experience where he realized that some f modern astronomy conflicted with some of the writings of, of, um, in the uh, old texts. And, you know, he had those texts modified. He, you know, he, he said that science is, has the final world word on on the structure of the physical universe because, you know, it uses this method that is more powerful than, than mere speculation, observation, and experiment. And, and, but the only thing that, that he insisted on that would be, uh, that is, was crucial to him as a Buddhist was, um, and that science, physical scientists might have some problem with, and, uh, was um, a reincarnation. Mm. That was essential <laughs> to his his philosophy. It was layered and, onto all the physics. And uh, no, some of he was willing to revise and very interested in collaboration with neuroscientists as to meditation and what it does to you know does it. Is there uh, the relation between the physical mind and the mind? Or, um, but I don't, that's not true of all religious leaders. And there have been areas of conflict between religion and science. Uh, by and large, religion has been on the retreat in those areas of overlap as. Uh, scientists discovered more about the real world which did conflict with earlier uh, uh, myths or beliefs um, and there still remain areas of deep conflict uh, in biology and in cosmology and uh, I don't think there is much room for compromise there as a scientist I mean I think uh, the, the truths that science reveals are Truths according to this scientific criteria, period. And uh, be, if they conflict with some myth, too bad. Uh, there are other areas where there really should be no conflict 
because the, again, religion addresses different questions, which are not questions that at the moment are in the realm of, of scientific inquiry. And you're happy to let religion continue to operate in that realm? Uh, yeah, uh, although I, you know, I see no reason why science and won't expand its methodology to um, understand human behavior as much as, um, but we're far from that. Uh, so in questions of ethics and, and, um, and the way humans interact with one another, religion has played a very strong role and sometimes very useful, sometimes very harmful. Uh, Unfortunately, but, more weighted to the latter, in my opinion, than the former. Yeah. Um, right. I, I could agree with you. But um, it's certainly one of the great attractions. In a, the great attractions of religion, in addition to, ex, to providing answers to questions that can't be provided by other means, is also giving a framework for people on how to behave. And I agree that although religion has, hasn't done a, always a very good job about it, Neither is any any other <laughs> uh, organized mode of thought. Um, so I I do hope that science and scientific methods, as they are applied eventually uh, to understanding how people actually work, how the brain actually works, uh, and uh, the origins of human behavior, will will help in this endeavor. But so far, not. <laughs>